And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going into the future, to the year 2050. And we are going to be all CEOs of corporations. We're going to be trying to make our corporation good in different areas like environment and social and jobs and research. It's all about playing with the money and cash is king. We're talking about Green Deal here. Uh, it's for three to five players. It plays in about 25 minutes per player. Uh, we're talking about Karma Games here as the publisher. And so let's take a look. I'll show you how it's played and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, we have green deal set up here for four players. We have a big board here and we have a bunch of cards set up. Now, since you are a CEO of a company in the year 2050, you're gonna be managing the cash, you're gonna be managing the income of that corporation, and you're going to be trying to put yourself up into different tracks of research, social jobs, and environment. And you're gonna be doing that over 10 rounds and scoring points. Let's talk about how a turn works. Now it comes with a cool little player aid. So each round has four phases, auction, accounting, investment, and expansion. Let's run through one of these rounds. In auction round, you are secretly and simultaneously going to select how much cash from zero to 19 that you want to bid. So maybe I bid four and I flip this over. And once everyone's flipped it over, we adjust the cash down, the amounts that people bid. And we then do turn order. Whoever bid the most gets first in turn order and then second in turn order and so on and so forth. So essentially the first round you're just bidding for turn order there. Now that adjustment actually theoretically is phase two. It's the accounting phase because we take the cash down, but then you each get income and you start with a certain amount of income depending on the amount of players that you start with. And everyone starts with seven income. So right after you spent cash on the auction, you then are generating more cash from the income that your company is providing. So everybody would then would go up seven income on this cash scale. Now, when the investment is really the main phase of this game where you're selecting some actions and you can select from a few different things. One thing, and you can only do one, pretty much one thing here in this action phase where you are selecting, you could select one of these four sustainability projects. And so what happens is all these that are on top are basically what's gonna be out next round. Everything down here is what's available this round. So let's take a look at some of these sustainability projects because you could take one of these as your action. So each of these are the four different types, environment, jobs, social, and research. Each of them tells you what it is, a paperless office, anti-corruption policy, school in Africa, or driverless cars. And so each of these are going to have a size. This is a project size of one, and they rank from one all the way to five. And if you want to buy one of these, essentially you have to pay cash. So this, I would have to spend two cash, but I'd get three more income that I would get generated each round, and I'd get five points. Where on this one, I'd have to spend a whopping $19.00 and I would go down four in income, but I'd get 15 points. So it's a mix of points and income there. So let's just say for the heck of it, uh, I took this research here. I would also get an orange research with two that would match, and I'd get to place this in a later phase. We'll talk about that later, but we would adjust this. Seven cash, three income, five points. So now remember our cash moved up because of our income at the end of, at the end of the phase two there. And so let's say I'm the gray player here and I get to pay seven cash for that. So I'm gonna go down to 19, I only have 19 left. Uh, but the income went up three. So I got three spots, one, two, three. So my income now, instead of getting seven every round, I'm gonna get nine every round. And then I get five points, boom. So that's how you do that. And I would grab that card. Now this would go in front of me and this would empty out. Now, depending on the amount of players, there's always one less um, of these cards you can take than how many players there are. For instance, there's four players in this game. Let's say the next two players took these two. Because uh, there's only one left, the last player cannot take one of these projects. So that, that entices you to bid earlier in the turn order because only three of these can get taken any round with four players. It's just the amount of players minus one. So if someone if they took the, th the first three, that would just get discarded and they can't take one of those. So what else can you do in action if you can't take one of those? Well, you can take one of these action cards, okay? And so these action cards, again, next round, this round. And so here we have a bribe and this infinity symbol means this action card is gonna be good for the whole game. In all, tiles, uh, in all ties and auctions, you win. So anytime there's auctions or company valuation, which we'll talk later, any ties you're gonna win. It doesn't cost anything, but it is gonna cost you two points. 
Uh, hyperactive, this, some of these cards happen at the end of the game for scoring, that's what this logo means. At the end of the game, you receive four points for every one of these action cards that you've purchased. Just straight points and it costs you three cash. Some of these happen in certain spots, so this lawsuit here, next round this would come out. Uh, it's minus two, $2 for every player. So you sue somebody with a lawsuit, everybody would go down two cash, and you'd get two cash for every player, and it's minus one. So these are just ways to sort of break the rules of the game. So you could take one of these action cards there and pay the cash and do whatever. Now, in addition, when you take one of these action cards, you also have the option of taking a loan. If you take a loan, you'll go up $8 in this case. And by the end of the game, you gotta pay back 10 because of the interest there. Uh, you only get one, basically one shot to repay this loan. And for every dollar that you didn't pay back, you lose two points. So if you didn't pay anything back, you're gonna lose 20 points for this loan. And they start at eight and they gradually go all the way to, I think, 24 something like that as they go through. So they start low and they go high, and those are loans. Another thing you could possibly do if you didn't take the action card here, uh, you could do a tax refund. And a tax refund, you could get $4 in cash, or you can take um, one of these um, PR tokens for free. And that brings us to the, uh, the other extra actions that you can do in a turn. Now, in addition to either taking one of these projects or taking an action card, uh, and, and or a loan. Uh, there's two things that are always um, an option to you before your, your turn's over in the investment phase. One is you could pay dividends to um, the shareholders. And depending on where you are on the income track, there's different bands that are here. So the gray player could spend three cash and gain four points. And you can do this once per round. These guys down here are in this band and they would pay two cash and get three points. And you know, it's one for two, up to four for five. And you know, it, it just changes. So you can always do that once per round. And you can also buy one of these PR chips. You could buy one per round. You could spend $2 to get a one value, three for two, four for three. We'll talk about what these do later. This will help you influence how your, com your companies, uh, you know, how they look, how they appear in certain tracks. So you could buy one of those as well each round. And just to show you again, one of those action cards that's here every round is if you didn't want to take one of these action cards, you didn't take a project, you could either take four cash or get one of those, uh, you could get one of those um, PR tokens for free. And you can still buy one, so you can actually get more than one on a turn if you want. And the last phase around is the expansion phase, where everybody in turn order that bought a project, a sustainability project, would put it on the map. Now these numbers here are basically where you'd start. So with four players, each person is going to end up putting their first token on one of these four spots. And essentially the first token pretty much does nothing, but let me show you what happens as things start to move. Okay, so let's say the four people have each put a project out at this point. Uh, and now, now, it's interesting to note that this world map, if there's three players, it's just this light spot here. If there's four players, it goes up to here. And if all five players, you use the whole map. And this map wraps. And so next time someone places, let's say it's an, another round, and it's this player's turn to place, because you're only placing possibly one of these per, per, uh, per phase per round. Now when you place, you have to place at least one spot away from any of the ones that you already own anywhere, up, down, left, right, and diagonally. So if I'm this guy here and I bought another uh, green one, I would have to place it in one of these eight. Now, um, if I place one orthogonally, up, down, left, or right, and I'm with myself, I can cooperate with myself. And what this happens is we add up the, the numbers of the, sub of the projects, that would be nine, divide by two, and round down. So we essentially would get um, four. So in this case, we would get four income. And so one, two, three, four, I would get to go up four income there because I cooperated with myself. Now, in order to cooperate with myself, it has to be up, down, left, right, and it has to be the same type of thing. So this is, they're both green, they're both environments. If these, one of these weren't green, you couldn't cooperate, they have to be the same. But let's say later on, I actually had this there in a round. I wanna show you how this, this round map, this map wraps. So I'm here. Now, if I'm gonna build another one in a different round, again, it, it's gotta be around any of the things that you already have. This wraps over to here. So from here, I could go here, it also goes diagonal, so I could go here, it goes diagonal, I could go here. So the whole entire, it's almost like a circle on a map. You can wraps everywhere for movement. So we talked about cooperating with yourself. Let's say in a further turn, I did wrap, and I put this right here. Now, this is interesting because we now have the same two colors. This is blue for jobs in this case, and now I'm here and this is there. Now, if my tile is a bigger size project, four, his is two, I have a choice. I can either, continue, I can either cooperate, or I can compete with them. If I cooperate, we add these two up, which is six, divide by two, which is three, each of us would get three income. So we would go one, two, three, and he would go one, two, three, and he'd probably be pretty happy with me at this point. Now, if mine's larger than his again, and we're next to each other, I can compete with him. 
So what I would do is we take the difference. Four minus two is two. I would go up two income and he would go down two income. Ha ha ha, I'd go one, two, and he'd go one, two. Now remember, prerequisite for that is that it's the same kind of, uh, of, of, of track there, jobs. Um, and I have a larger one than him, and it's up, down, left, right, not diagonally. If mine's larger, I can compete or cooperate. If he was the one that placed it here, let's say he had some other ones here and he ended up moving here. Um, if you're lower than them, you can only, you, you, you're kind of forced to cooperate there. That would be the end of the round, and we'd go up. At the end of the fourth, seventh, and tenth round, we do a PR assessment. Now we have these tokens that we bought, we talked about these PR tokens earlier, and we secretly, we, we hide our shield here over this little player mat, and we secretly get to add any amount of these to any of these. I could add them all to one, I could split them up, I could actually even save one for later, but I can only save up to one, and we could go up in different tracks. Now during the game, when you actually buy these cards during the action phase there where you're investing, and it was a size four, and you get one of these four tiles, that is when you actually move your, your guy up f that many, up four, on the green track and so on and so forth. So around this time of the game, people will have been moving up tracks because they will have been uh, bought uh, a bunch of these projects. And so what you get to do is you get to adjust those with the PR and depending on, you're trying to look to see where can I get first, second, and third because first, second, and third in each of these is gonna get eight, four, and two. So let's just take a look at blue for example. I put my PR up three. And on this color, this light wood color here, I go up one, two, three, and there's a special token that has a, an image marker on it. And that essentially means just for right now, temporarily, we've done a PR campaign to make me in first place. If nobody else put any PR tokens on this, I'd get first, second, and third, and we'd get eight, four, and two points for this exactly thing. We would do this for each of these four tracks, depending on what people do on their PR. So you can, you can uh, basically temporarily boost yourself to try to make a higher image to get those points. Now at the end of the sixth round, we're doing a sustainability assessment. We see this marker right here. Now essentially what happens is, however low you are, you look at your lowest one. So for example, let's say I was the light wood. The lowest marker I have is at three. This comes over here and I would get 18 points. Where let's say black is only gonna get four points. If somebody had not moved up on blue, they're not gonna get any points. So you look at your lowest marker and look over here and that's how many points you get. So you continue through this through all the rounds. Again, uh, once we get through the round 10, you do some end game scoring. Some of those uh, action cards have some end game scoring. We do another assessment like we just did here. Then we do um, income and the highest one gets 12, eight and four points. And if you're ever tied, you just take the two and divide and round down. And then finally we do one last PR assessment where we're, we're changing the, 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 uh, the value temporarily of what we are in each of these tracks. And at the end of that, we see who has won. All right, well, there's Green Deal. Okay, so I was interested in this game because I like economic games. I like medium weight euros that have a lot of interaction, especially if there's some negotiation involved and it seemed like this had that. Um, it is a pretty straight euro. Um, there's a lot of different mechanisms in there. Of course, you have the simultaneous auction. Um, you have the different tracks that you can go up. You have those PR tokens that you can, you know, spend actions and, and cash on to get to try to make your perception temporarily good enough to get some certain points on those tracks. And then you have balancing those tracks and scoring the least amount of, of those tracks during the sustainability part of the action, auctions. Um, I, I liked a lot of this game. I like I like how all those mechanisms sort of fit together. Also, you have like the game within the game, which is that world map and deciding which ones to do. Are you gonna continue with one of those colors to continue to get more and more income, but then stay on one track? Or are you going to go with different ones to try to go up the tracks evenly to get those points during the two times those sustainability points come in? Uh, but then maybe not not be able to cooperate or, or compete with other players on that world map. A lot of different things to think about here. Cash is definitely key king in this game for sure. Um, I was hoping, I guess, this is the, these are just personal things, personal preferences. I was hoping that the, the, the interaction before the players was going to be a little bit more with the competing or cooperation. It seemed like it was pretty much a no-brainer. You would calculate which was better for you and better or worse for them depending on it and you would just do it. There wasn't a lot of talking and this is a group that typically negotiates a lot. So I guess I was kind of alerted to this thinking it was going to be a little bit more of a negotiation game or I didn't know a whole lot about it, but it's pretty straight Euro. Um, yeah, you can affect other people, uh, but it's pretty straight and dry as to how to do that. Um, for me, it's a little too straight of a Euro to, to really like it, to want to play it too many more times. Um, but I did have some people in my group that did really like the tension uh, and the, the different tracks and trying to figure out what to do and managing the cash. Um, uh, a couple other things that I found is 
if you get low in income early by buying a couple of big researches, it's really hard to kind of get your income back up there. Uh, sure, you could take those loans, but sooner or later you have to pay them back anyways or take the hit. Uh, and sometimes it's, it can be really hard for someone who has a little income at the beginning uh, by making some, some maybe non-ideal decisions. It makes them really hard to kind of come back. Uh, we saw a player that really got crushed uh, and was never able to, re, to, to sort of come back after being down an income level. Uh, I also saw a card that I thought was pretty overpowered. There was one that allowed you to, to compete or, I believe it was to compete or cooperate diagonally as opposed to just up, down, left, right. And this person was like getting income after income after income by, by every time he's getting one, he's cooperating with somebody and his income's going up. But he was like close to the max the whole game. Cash is king in this game. If you get a lot of income every game, every round, you can bid more for turn order, which means you get the better things and you've got the money to do things. That card just seemed to almost break the game a little bit for me. Um, but all in all, you take that card out, and if you're looking at this like I like straight, like you like straight euros, and you like to see the different tracks, and you like to have different economics, different scales going up and down with the cash and the income, and trying to figure out what the best do, then maybe you'll like this game. Um, for me, it was it wasn't exactly what I expected, so I didn't typically like it as much as I had hoped. Uh, it's an okay game. There's nothing wrong with it. It did feel a little long for what it was. Um, 25 minutes per player. I mean, now you're starting to talk about like power grid time. Um, and if I'm going to spend that much time on a Euro, I'm probably going to play Power Grid or Rockwell or something else that really uh, blows your socks off. This wasn't a bad game, but it doesn't, like, it's not the, the game of the year or anything like that. So it's a decent game. It's a good game. Nothing wrong with it. It didn't suit my preferences. It may suit yours from this video. Hopefully you can figure that out. That's Green Deal. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah. Yeah.